The Arkansas Derby is the final derby prep from Oaklawn, and it is uh, one of our 100-point preps, and uh, it's the 12th race on Saturday's card, running a mile and an eighth for three-year-olds, and this looks to be a pretty good one. We'll take a look at the field, and of course, we'll see Timberlake, who won the Rebel in his debut at three. Moose coming in from the West Coast for Bob Baffert, it's, and uh, really could upset the apple cart for a lot of uh, a lot of reasons. Uh, mainly, he wins this; he takes a hundred points away from anybody uh, trying to get into the Derby. So it's a, it's kind of a spoiler here. Uh, Just Steele, who we've seen at Oakland, uh, basically will because he's. <laughs> trained by the coach he'll run in every uh, every stakes race they can find um mystic dan who uh, won the southwest stakes in the slop and then we've got uh, liberal arts coming back from the rebel uh and dimatic uh who we also uh, saw in the uh, in the rebel stakes so uh this is a um, a pretty good field we've seen a lot of these before uh there's a and uh, it, it looks to be a pretty good field one of the things right off the bat to note is, uh, and this is my embellishment, is I've put time for truth as the speed, but there really isn't a confirmed front runner in this race. Uh, I have a feeling time for truth will end up being that uh, because uh, he seems more uh, attuned to it. I could possibly see informed Patriot or Imperial Gun trying to get on the lead, uh, but uh, time for Truth looks logical to me. Uh, now, this is a horse who has been uh, getting better steadily and uh, just won at his first effort around two turns and rid it off the lead and um, and then closed way late and uh, did so with uh, some pretty good authority. Uh, so uh, there's some talent here in this one for sure. And, you know, if you're looking for a horse to maybe... Uh, can just get on the lead and go bonkers. Uh, maybe time for truth is it. But the fact that this one is improving um, and was pretty good in sprints. I mean, gave Valentine Candy uh, all that she could, he could handle um, in a sprint. And um, so, I mean, I think this one has shown that uh, uh, there's some talent here and um, it, it will be a very tall order to wire this field. There's no question about it. But just the fact that uh, there isn't a lot of uh, pace in this race, uh, I don't think there will be. Um, if you're looking for a value play, maybe Time for Truth is one that you take a look at. Uh, so we'll look at them each uh, individually. And Timberlake, of course, jumps right out. Uh, came off the bench, won the Rebel. Uh, I will note this, though. Uh, his fractions were, were just about the same as they were in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Now... I, I'm fairly certain he he was not tuned up all the way, so uh, I'll expect a better race coming up. But just a little thing to note is that uh, he didn't necessarily improve uh, numbers wise. He still ran a good race. I'm not trying. You know, we're, we're I'm splitting hairs a little bit here, and obviously with Muth in this race, we've got to look for. Uh, things to differentiate between the two. They're going to be the shortest prices. Um, I think Timberlake uh, will run a good race here and uh, will need to take a move forward. And also, I think, is going to have to run a little closer to the pace than perhaps in the Rebel Stakes. Um, lingered back a little bit. And uh, we, we can say one thing. It did take him a little bit to get engaged fully. Uh, still drew off well, but um, it, just a couple of little things. Again, splitting hairs a little bit, but if you have to differentiate, uh, those are some things that may be a bit of a negative on Timberlake uh, when, if you uh, consider that there isn't a lot of pace in this race. Uh, Informed Patriot has been uh, a marginal player on the Derby Trail, and it really just isn't getting any better, and that's really the knock more than anything else. I think can be uh, involved in the pace. But that's the extent of the participation. I don't see him being there at the end. So he's a toss for me. Muth, uh, what can you say? I mean, he's been fantastic on the West Coast. The only blemish is losing to Prince of Monaco, his stable mate at a shorter distance, uh, which was more attuned for 
Prince of Monaco. Uh, one thing, you go back and watch the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, and I did so because it's the one race where you have both Timberlake and Muth in it. Uh, Muth did all the heavy lifting in that race comparatively between the two of them. Timberlake laid back like he did in the Rebel Stakes. Um, and, uh, did you know, Timberlake ran an okay race, but Muth really, I thought, was more impressive because he was up nearer to the pace and uh, was working a little harder, and he had plenty of run in the stretch. He just ran into a buzzsaw in fierceness. That's really what it comes down to. Um, the West Coast fractions, the West Coast times are always, you know, noticeably faster than the East Coast, so it is kind of hard to gauge, but... Um, and Muth just came off the bench in the San Vicente at seven furlongs, and I think that was just a run for fun. Uh, so uh, I think this is a quality horse. And, you know, I, I'm being by Babford, he doesn't ship to Oakland unless he can win. Um, he has a pretty darn good track record at Oakland over the years. American Pharaoh, looking at Lucky, the list goes on and on. So uh, to me, Muth will be the horse to beat primarily – because he will be closer to the pace, and I think tactically he's going to get first jump uh, on Timberlake. But uh, Timberlake certainly would be uh, the prime second choice. Mystic Dan, it's been belabored to death, but I think he just loves the mud. Uh, the horse really, uh, he hadn't run anything close to that uh, in efforts prior, and particularly in his Effort prior to the to the Southwest on round two turns was nothing to write home about. He did linger back in the Southwest a little more than usual, so he certainly had something in the tank late. Uh, but um, I, I I just it it's just was such an anomaly. You just have to believe it was the mud, and he really he had all all his own way. He saved ground along the rail, didn't have any challenge there. And uh, just had plenty of horse left, and that was that. Uh, that that particular day. I mean, Just Steel ran a, a hell of a lot harder race, had, being away on the outside, um, and, and you know, was I think was the better horse uh, of the two uh, for that reason. But um, you you just can't like a horse having things all his own way like that, win so big, and then coming back into a race like this where. Uh, potentially there was a variable. And even if it wasn't the mud, there's certainly bounce potential because that was just such a uh, a much bigger effort than Mystic Dan had run before. So I'm tossing. I don't think he can run back to that. And um, if he runs back to what he was doing prior, he won't factor in this race. So he's a toss. Um, Imperial Gun just isn't good enough, I don't think. Uh, came off the bench. He did pretty well uh, prior to the layoff. But it came off the bench and ran kind of a uh, an okay race that uh, really wasn't much to write home about. So to me, it's uh, he certainly could run a better race here, but <clears throat> I don't think he's a, a threat to the better horses in this race. And from the ten hole, uh, he certainly tactically uh, will not have things uh, in in good order early, so he'll have to work a little harder. And I think that'll probably spell doom. So Imperial Gun is a toss to me. Conversely, will take it is interesting. Now, he is a horse that had been improving, and in his last race, which was an allowance, uh, he ran a much better race than anything he had done prior. So obviously you have to think about regression, but it was really the way he did it. That was a pretty darn good allowance field. Uh, Crushed was is a Bradcox horse who uh, uh, was favored. Um, you also had... Um, Awesome Road, I believe, was in that race. And you had some pretty good allowance level horses. And Will Take It rated well and uh, came came hard in the stretch. Uh, wasn't able to finish the deal, but it just looked like a really nice effort of a horse who possibly the light bulb's gone off. He is a tappet, so it is possible there. Um, so to me, Will Take It is probably more likely for underneath, particularly uh, without a lot of pace here and coming from mid-pack but he's one to think about for some value underneath in your exotics. Uh, you know, Dymatic was a horse that I normally would not get excited about, um, and I didn't really like him in the Rebel Stakes because I didn't think he uh, 
had made an appreciable amount of improvement where he was going to take a really big f- leap forward and be a heavy-duty contender. But, you know, if you go back and watch that Rebel, he was keen, uh, was a little rank early on, and that probably sapped him, but he was coming late. And, you know, if you look at the fractions, he ran a better race than he did in the one prior. So even though uh, he didn't factor in the race per se, he did take a step forward and he did improve. So this is a horse who's on the improve. And uh, I think it's very logical to expect, particularly with Steve Asperson training, that, you know, he could be very similar to Disarm, you know, who just kept getting better every single race. So uh, Dimatic, I think, is one that we could certainly use. I think you'll get a price because all the money's going to go on Timberlake and Muth. And if you're looking for a horse with value who has the potential to upset the apple cart, if they, you know, Timberlake and Muth bang heads and Dimatic can get a golden rail or something, then uh, he, he to, of all the other horses, I think he's probably the one who's most logical to uh to, to spring the upset. Uh, just Steel is, um, I, uh, you know, I've said it in many of my postings. I think this horse just needs a break. Uh, he's run 10 starts. Uh, the last race um, wasn't uh, that great. He was outside, uh, in the outside post, had a, a tough trip, the second one in a row. So I suppose it's logical that he would be a little tired in that race. Um, he doesn't, he gets a little bit more a little better post here and I like this horse I really do but one thing I'm starting to notice with him is that since he's by justified and we know a mile and an eighth is uh, almost the ceiling for them that uh, maybe he's running at longer distances than he wants and now he's consistently doing it and so it's starting to show a little bit and that may be uh, what is attributed to the subpar effort last time but really more than anything else I think this horse needs a break. I also noted on the tab that D. Wayne Lucas put him through a mile workout two back. Now, that's highly unusual. And usually when they put him at a mile, it's because they're trying to breed or build some stamina. Now, you would think this horse has run three two-turn races in a row that he'd be pretty salty at this point. So I thought it was interesting that they throw him a mile work in there to, uh, to, to build some more stamina. So I think maybe they're a little concerned that a mile and an eighth might be a little too far for this one. I'm not sure, but just to me, the signs are that, that you don't want any part of just steel in this race. And uh, could could surprise, And but I think the extent of it is underneath in the gimmick. So if you like just steel, take a shot. But uh, I, have, I think there's better value with others. Uh, liberal arts, uh, I didn't think ran a bad Rebel Stakes coming off the bench for the debut, but, you know, it wasn't an improved effort over what he had run at two in his race prior. The fractions were very similar. And, um, you know, and and you could say the same for Timberlake, and that's kind of why I like Muth a little better here. And so he's certainly eligible to run a better race, but the big problem more than anything else is the race shape. There just isn't a lot of pace to run to here. Uh, now, he could do something like Tuscan de Gold did in the Louisiana Derby and be improving and be more forwardly placed. That's entirely possible. But I don't see that he has the top end necessarily to take down Muth or Timberlake. I think he can get underneath, but I just think uh, all things considered that he's probably more a good bet to be underneath uh, for the try or the super. So if we look at our wagering strategy, our value play is on the three, Dimatic. I think he makes a lot of sense. If he takes another step forward, then um, he can he can certainly factor in, in this race. And he would need some circumstance. There's no question about it in order to spring the upset. But he also might is a pretty good bet to get up for second, possibly. Uh, and uh, so why not throw a win, go across the board, bet on him at a price, and, and go for it, um, but it'll have to be, you know, I, I would need like eight to one or better, and uh, that's just my, for me, so uh, take that for what you will. I think Muth is the horse to beat here. We're gonna box Timberlake and Muth 
obviously, uh, for the exact. And then we'll key box Muth on top with two, three, and four. I think this race will be run on the front end, and um, I think it's um, time for truth. Uh, being the speed who has talent, may be able to stick around a little longer. They're probably going to try to slow it down on the front end, is my guess. So uh, we'll go key box, seven on top with two, three, and four. And so if we get that Muth Timberlake uh, exact, uh, then we double up. Uh, so the trifecta, we're just going to be real basic with it. Muth and Timberlake, 2727 two, with 1345. And uh, I don't even, you know, having two horses that really there's no reason to toss either one of them. Uh, and that, you know, this would be more of a betting race for me if I could find some vulnerability with either uh, Muth or Timberlake because then I can throw one of them out. But I, I don't... I don't see it here, so I think it's logical that uh, they're going to go 1-2 in this race, and my preference is towards Muth, but looks to be a pretty good Arkansas Derby, and uh, we'll see what we'll see.